Okay, now we're going to be talking about program tryouts. So you've set set up the machine and, and double checked everything. It's ready to go. So it's quote showtime. Um, so there are 12 program tests. Finishing the test, the, the setup, it wouldn't be wise to put the control in run mode, then push the, the green button. At least that would be a rare leap of faith. First, we test the program. This unit provides a hierarchy of methods by which you can guarantee it's going to be safe to run. They start with a with methods that don't move machine access, then with a single block step through the, the program with the, the cutting um, making chips. So for program verification, which methods you choose to, to prove your program and how to use it is situational. The, the first best graphic method is a, a graphic simulation using software that ev um, evaluates tool passes seen here. Um, it can display all aspects of the program and flag problem areas when a crash may occur. You'll get your chance to practice using the Vericut in chapter 26. So this is just a screen capture of what this would, would look like. Um, here's another one. Um, actually, these, I think these actually are, well, this one is a, is a live um, video here. Um, this is too long to play for this video, but um, this is something you'll have available to you in the, from the textbook. So Mastercam X offers several levels of verification. And so we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, Master Cam X offers um, yet other verifications in um, the PowerPoint for um, chapter 25. There's a demo, couple more ways that Master Cam can verify your tool path. Um, you, this will be done in, in exercises there. We may or may not cover that in what we're talking about here, but, but the point is we can see that there's various ways by using these um, Cam type of tools like Master Cam to help us to validate our program. There's many other um, tryout methods. One test might be okay if the program has been previously um, run. You, you know the programmer and the parts are inexpensive. How many tests do you believe my friend on the giant gantry mill performs before touching the start button? If it crashes, three expensive parts are lost at one time. So you can see um, it depends on the risk factor that you're gonna be making those kind of decisions. So for programming test categories, you can have pre-run test, um, no machine movement, ready, um, read the hard copy, not a very good test, graphic evaluation, controller graphics and tool path, utility slash cam evaluations. And so this would be the best choice. And so this is for pre-run test. Then for dry run tests where you have limit or, or control machine movements and so, you can have um, access disable, withholding Z, but allowing X and Y. You can have tool or machine withhold, no tool or, or material, or you can have oversized offsets to the pointing of no cutting. Um, for test run methods, you can be having the, the use tryout material, oversized offsets, but allowing some cutting and a single step testing. And then you can have halt run testing where you can have optional stops, feed and rapid override. Okay, to, to finish up this, um, this um, first part of the module for, for this week, um, the conclusion is as the author speaks, I can still remember my first program run. No kidding, even though it's been many years, it was a small cast iron transmission case. It needed several milled bores and holes drilled. The, the butterflies are, are still not forgotten. Um, good luck on your first program, but there is a matter of luck. Um, well, I would say providence would might be a better word, just in case you are wondering that first setup and program ran just fine with no modification. But there have been countless others that require from a little to maximum debugging before they ran right. Okay, that finishes up this. We'll go ahead and um, pause here. And so thank you very much.